Hello everyone, my name is Fajar Purnamai and in this video I'll be doing a full presentation on recruiting future backup cryptocurrency miners. Actually just only that, but we will be also showing our innovation of solar power bank on single board computer. So no need to know who we are, but know where we come from, what's important is the content. So this content is mainly for cryptocurrency supporters and evangelists. If you are outside of the scope of cryptocurrency or a newcomer, keep in mind that cryptocurrency is a digital asset or a digital currency. So the first cryptocurrency that we know is called Bitcoin. And other than that, they are called alternative coins. They can be derived from Bitcoin blockchain, such as Litecoin, Peercoin, Dogecoin, Aurora coin, or there is uh, uh, another coin which have a totally different blockchain, such as Ethereum, Ripple, Omni, NXT, and so ever. And on, other than that, there are tokens such as Ethereum tokens, Omni tokens, Tron tokens, and other tokens. So cryptocurrency became a very hot topic ever since 2017 because it was once below one dollar because once Bitcoin was below one dollar and it reached an all-time high of nineteen thousand dollars per Bitcoin and today is ranging from six thousand to eight thousand dollars and so what common people know is that a Bitcoin is a place to get rich so newcomers including myself are attracted to the get rich quick scheme so for example John McAfee make a crazy price prediction that he will one day reach one thousand one million dollar per Bitcoin so if you buy Bitcoin today with only six thousand dollars one day your Bitcoin will be worth one million dollars however as I dove into cryptocurrency that is not that I learned that is not everything in fact that is just only a part of the interesting stuff even Bitcoin and it's not even the essence of cryptocurrency what common people don't know is that cryptocurrency is a new monetary system so the traditional monetary system we need to give our trust to the third parties such as banks for transaction but unfortunately you also have to give up give away your power and authority over your assets to this third party the worst case is that your account can be frozen anytime while for cryptocurrency is a new monetary system and somehow everybody be can become their own bank so the popular saying is that for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency your key your Bitcoin um, your bank your money your power your money and bitcoin is very difficult to confiscate and other than that there is gold and cash which is an alternative for other than bank to save yourself the attractive feature of cryptocurrency that it is borderless you can assess your crypto you can assess your coins from anywhere around the world and no matter where you are your coins is safe on the network but at the same time only you have access to your coins you, you know where your coins are and only you know where your coins are if you can if you you if you use it properly it will be private and only you have the power to spend them or to do anything with it it is decentralized so everyone become their own bank and everybody um, have their own ledger or the blockchain 
or records of transactions but using some using a very special consensus consensus algorithm they are able to reach a consensus so i will not explain the technical detail here it is the technical detail is so much to explain you can look into other video or uh, i will make a video separately about that later the most effective feature for me is uncensored so no one can tell you how to spend your coins from whom you are having transaction with and where you store your coins no one can tell you on the other side if you use the traditional system the banks and the government control your transaction for example if you're in the US you cannot conduct transaction with sanctioned countries maybe such as Venezuela, uh, North Korea, Iran, and I don't know about Russia, but I heard that if you are having interaction with Russia, they will freeze your account, or if they are, or if you are receiving money from um, Russians, they will receive that, they will freeze that transaction. So the banks and the government tells you where you can spend your money and another crazy story is in Australia that uh, over ten thousand dollar you need to have permission from the bank so you have to put your money in the bank and if you want to make a transaction over ten thousand you need to ask for their permission which is crazy so in other words we are losing our freedom in tradition in the on the traditional monetary system while in the cryptocurrency the new monetary system the essence is the freedom of financial so we are free to do to transact to whomever we want so let me emphasize that the traditional monetary system the banks and stuff they are a great monetary system if the econ economy is doing great however is a dangerous monetary system when a economy crisis occur take a look at this picture and i heard from some news that it's difficult to withdraw even one dollar so hyperinflation happened in zimbabwe there are some issues in argentina lebanon and turkey where the banks where they report that banks are freezing your accounts like china also and so ever and for example the situation in hong kong recently everybody is withdrawing their cash and the atm the most of the atms are in empty they're afraid that the bank might close and so many stories is be so the problem is the the authority or banks or the government have too much power and a centralized power so during the economic crisis they don't care about you they don't care about uh, about single person they don't care about people they don't care about single individual what they care is the system so in order to save their system during crisis they won't hesitate to take your money, to take your asset. However, if you have hard assets such as gold, cash, or real estate items, land, etc., they are a bit hard. They you 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 will be a bit safe, quite safe. When do, during the when fiat or when during when the banks are stealing money from people or when fiat is going down if you're holding cash is bad but if you're holding gold or other stuff Scan lagi. okay okay let me continue so where was i hard asset and stuff okay so if you hold gold and hard asset and land and forever you may be safe from the hyperinflation or the crisis and 
because you you are having you have the physical item as you in your hand well although they are able to confiscate your gold for example in under 33 during president nixon time in the u.s but you can always fight back or you can just bury your gold behind the backyard or hide them somewhere and for cryptocurrency it is harder to confiscate and because only you know and if you do it correctly only you know only you know where it is and only you know whether you have one or not and yeah that's it they may be able to to know uh, if you don't uh, exercise correctly the government or any authority may be able to know that you have a bitcoin but uh, only you have the key to access them so what makes bitcoin strong and secure so this is bitcoin not cryptocurrency it it, di it differs from each one so they are strong because of the many workers what they do is they confirm transactions maintain ledger of the blockchain or and they issue new coins workers can also be called miners because they are rewarded with bitcoin uh, for their work and how to attack bitcoin uh, one is to so you you have to have to form the workers so the current network hash rate is 65 million teras per second you need 129 billion i7 computers at least to attack the network but the problem as you know that uh, bitcoin mining today is very centralized take a look this is our mining farm in china so the first step in my opinion to destroy bitcoin is to target this farm and after you destroy this farm you if, if you are uh, very if you hold a very high authority you can make a law to stop these farms from working and then when the hash rate has you drastically reduce you can build your own mining farm and then attack the bitcoin network Now, even though technically, even though technically there is a still also digital, but if you are able to ban this farm and then to ban people from mining, and then there is no one other than these farms that are mining zero hash rate, meaning that the network stops. And then when you mine using your farm, you can just rewrite history or make a new history. and thanks to these farms mining is very competitive because they have a very low very massive processing power and they are the ones who are reaping the major portion of the reward so small miners such as us are very discouraged from mining because of the unprofitability take a look at the table below i tried mining using a single board computer as a single board and daily it is unprofitable we, i lost i lost money instead in terms on of dollars but it's unprofitable because the coins that you get from this mining cannot pay for your electricity and your internet and continue from the previous slide but the um processing power is proportional to electricity cost so larger processing power larger electricity and lower profit for small miners so there is some study showing uh, uh what is this bar graph or bar chart 
that uh, bit that the electricity cost for mining bitcoin for the whole network rivals an entire country so the problem is like in this one mining is centralized which is very dangerous why take a look at this image which is easier to destroy a single mining farm or tell everybody to stop mining so it's easier to destroy farms than telling each and every person to stop mining which is why the objective of this presentation is to encourage more miners especially for cryptocurrency support and evangelists educate ordinary people to mine mm, why we encourage more miners as you can see as you can see in the previous slide that the more the honest miner the more secure the network but why we want us ordinary why we also encourage us ordinary people to mine because we want to decentralize the miner the mining process so by decentralizing the mining we will have a stronger network so secure network doesn't mean a strong network such as the picture here if you want to destroy bitcoin destroy this mining farm but what happens if every single person is this in this world is mining then you know uh, there's no need for me to say but you will know how the how impossible it is to stop uh, cryptocurrency or bitcoin in that time and we encourage the use of green energy for mining which is the topic for this presentation so before we continue let's go to some disclaim disclaimer do you need a specialized specialized hardware to mine for example, do you need an N miner R17 to mine Bitcoin? So the answer is not necessarily. To mine, no, you don't need. Any computer can mine. It is just less or unprofitable. There are graphic cards, personal computers, laptops, phone, and senior board computers. So let me go back to this one. So the the so going back to the title is recruiting future backup cryptocurrency miners. So what if what I'm telling you? What happen if my if our worst fear that there will be ban on mining farms where the authorities banks or even people who have great power started to attack this mining farm and at that time the bitcoin network or all the cryptocurrency network will be drastic, drastically weakened so what should we do at that time so the message for cryptocurrency supporter and cryptocurrency or even more cryptocurrency evangelists it is you who have to step in you are the backup miner and when this mining farm stop it is you who must mine so most people say that this USB miner is useless it is unprofitable it is only for education but during that during that time if the worst actually happen that is your weapon when this mining farm are attack it is you who must take that place so mine using your laptop using your gpu using even your phone single board computers and that um USB miner will be very useful, trust me. So, what about the software? 
there are the software are already available online and ready to use you just need to download for example with some miner on your smartphone download and then start mining and that's all you need to do now here is some content that I was asked to put um, this is not actually for you people for evangelists and supporters but mining on the juice but mining on a city can be a gamble if you're lucky you can get one bitcoin in less than two years and one bitcoin is six thousand dollars today no the reward is 25 bitcoin if i'm correct oh and i forgot to say something last time was my message to cryptocurrency supporter and evangelist my my message to newcomers or those who are not into cryptocurrency my message is this is your chance your once in a lifetime chance to get to have a monetary system that support freedom of financial no one can tell you how to use your money no one can tell you to whom you can transact with no one can confiscate your money everything is freedom free for you so if you are passing this chance and let cryptocurrency and bitcoin die in how many centuries later can we receive freedom again okay so this is also a content that i was asked to put for education the codes are open source students can look into the source code on github or anywhere else with the source code they can write their own miner they can make application on existing blockchains or you can write your own blockchain for an as an experiment now is for the time of what is inside our manuscript our article our paper so we so we since we were having a electricity problem when mining using a single board computer what can we do with this and what can we do with the electricity problem with ordinary people not on a farm scale where you can just m make a grid make a renewable energy or use the nuclear energy forever but what can we single person can do and the answer that we found is you can buy a solar panel usb and use this solar panel usb to generate electricity from the sun and use the power bank to stabilize the current and this and a computer that can be powered by the by usb i know two types of computer one is a single board computer and the other one is a smartphone additionally as i said before using this usb miner will be very uh, useful in the future when one day that the, f the farms are attacked those with a usb miner are the ones who will will best who will save who will secure the network the material solar panel is 15 dollars last time i checked power bank 20 dollars the type c usb cable 10 dollars internet connection 2 gigabyte per month is around 9 dollars a uh, single asus printer board is 50 dollars and additionally super bit one lander 2 is 60 dollars and this is the total price the step for mining is to set up the hardware install the operating system this is common installing the miner and its dependencies choose the coin to mine joining a pool or set up a solo mining creating a cryptocurrency wallet then begin mining and if you're doing like me do the measurement and how's the financial and technical report for the technical report simplicity 
hit quite simple on the four items in quantity and total $100 are all available online and there's you know one for the USB miners medium size is portable and it's like a working table area yeah I have other operation is plug in and plug out for the software operation requires accuracy but anyone can study and here I made a measurement using a USB volt voltmeter no USB wattmeter and I measured that during on average during 12 hour of sunlight I'm able to get a average input of 3.825 watt it means that uh, daily you times this by 12 hour it will be 45.9 watt hour this is how much energy we are able how much electricity we are able to generate and the single board computer for this case is as a tinker board it say uh, consumes 3.5.5 watt if you are mining using CPU 4.29 watt when mining using GPU and if you use a USB miner which will be moon lander is 8.2121 watt though the specification is uh, 10 watt and overall if you mine using all of these three all together you need to add all of them for the data rate is around 0 0.5 up to 1 kilobyte per second so 3 gigabytes no 1.5 gigabyte internet from one tree is enough for the RAM usage in the CPU this measurement is just to show that those devices are powerful enough to mine for financially I tried mining Litecoin even though it's not to mine Litecoin on CPU and GPU is not recommended on CPU it is better to mine something like Magicoin and those uh, coins with uh, algorithm with a yes script or yes script 16 is super you too find an algorithm that only support CPU mining and for GPU it's better to mine like a Raven coin and any coin I think Ethereum now is already changing so not Ethereum Bitcoin Gold so what else so any coin that is profitable in GPU don't mind Bitcoin, Litecoin those who are already have specialized miner but for just to make this um, this table to make this uh, uniform table so just make put one Litecoin and this is how much Litecoin I earn very little how much electricity is cost how much internet and on the bottom is the profitability but it is a free internet why because we use internet daily so probably we use internet to social media to youtube go to the web to browsing and stuff so i will for now let's leave internet out and how much is it saving electricity then this is 0 0.18 dollars per kilowatt hour this is uh, electricity in japan in your country it might be different for example in indonesia is 0 0.11 dollars and to measure the daily profit rate using electricity is unprofitable to mine while if you use uh, if it is no electricity and if you only include the solar how much energy how much electricity you generate using the solar panel you are able to make only a few profit but you as you as you can see wait before that how I calculate this table is to use this variable so how much is the hash rate generated by the 
our system robot GPU is to kilohertz per second, GPU 24.2 kilohertz per second, and the USB minor is 3.3 megahertz per second. And the network hash rate is 450 terahertz per second. Oh, this is the how much the competition, and it will it will affect the block difficulty of finding a block or generating a certain hash. For example, we need how many million zeros in that hash and so ever. So, so then the block reward is 25 Litecoin if you successfully mining a block. During that time, coin is $24, now it's dropped to $50, so it's even less profitable. So financially, if you are in here to get rich quick, if you are here for the profit, I, su I might suggest that you don't enter. I suggest that you get out because financially it will take more than 500 days to earn one dollar but this is for evangelists for supporters and for you who won and for you who are fighting for for cryptocurrency and if one day that these farms are attacked you are the ones who will be the backup miners and for those of you who are not yet in the cryptocurrency or a newcomer, the message is, when, when else can you have a freedom of financial? If you let cryptocurrency die, then those at the top will control the financial and you have no choice but to get poor, but that the poor will become even more poor and the rich will become even rich and those in power will have the will will be able to abuse their power future work is to find more profitable coins maybe this one is for financial and economy maybe we can find like making a grid and to make profit through mining but not yet and explore other renewable energies this is also very fun because renewable energies are free energy of course everything free is fun so it's for this all of the future works are economic so for investment strategies for example of course mining some coins now is not profitable but who knows that those coins are undervalued for example that sumo coin today the sumo coin if you hold sumo coin for one month one month yes if you hold sumo coin for one month you will have a 1000 percent profit imagine if you buy one dollar sumo coin 30 days ago and then that one dollar will become one thousand dollars Wait, wrong. One thousand percent. No, that one dollar becomes ten dollars. Sorry. And if you buy one hundred dollars, it will become one thousand dollars. If you buy Sumo coin thirty days ago of ten thousand dollars, it will become one hundred thousand dollars. So, if you mine these undervalued coins and Maybe you predict that it will rise in the future. That is what investment strategies mean. For business strategies is such as expanding into a mining farm. For example, where to find a free electricity, free internet, and where to find a cheaper hardware and stuff. Yeah, future work. Anyway, thank you very much. That is the complete presentation which is very long and thank you thank you and thank you so you can find me on the social media on the left and you can donate too